everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and let's dye some mohair yarn. Right here I have some Knit Picks Aloft yarn which is 72% Super Kid mohair, 28% silk. This yarn doesn't technically come as a bare option so I got this lace weight yarn in the colorway white. Um, this is lace weight 25 grams. So I don't think I've dyed lace weight before. I'm a tiny bit worried about the fuzz and the halo of this yarn, having it felt, but ultimately I am just really excited to see how this absorbs color. The first thing that I need to do is go take this ball and wind it into a circular skein on my skein winder. Technically, I could absolutely dye the intact ball of yarn and you get some really cool effects when you do things that way. However, since I've never dyed this dye type before, I think it would be beneficial to start with that circular hank of yarn that's a little more traditional for when you're gonna hand dye. This yarn is so light and airy and so fluffed up, it's really hard to believe that it's only 25 grams. And now that the yarn is no longer in a ball, we can go and dye it. But how do I want to dye this beautiful airy yarn? And will it felt? Oh, I really hope not. As I start pre-soaking this yarn in some plain tap water, I am still debating how I want to dye this. I am still not sure what I want to do. I just know that I'm going to let this pre-soak in some plain tap water overnight. Um, I want to give there plenty of time for that silk to be saturated and I believe the silk is mostly the core of this yarn and so I want to give that a, the best chance possible to absorb a lot of color. I would like to give a huge shout out to all of the Chemnitz patrons who make this Dye Pot PS series possible. I am so excited to finally dye this yarn and I hope that I don't make a mess of it. Uh, you'll see the names of some of the fiber patrons going across the screen right now. Um, thank you so much Karen Siegel, Ada Lai, and the rest of the fiber patrons. If you would like to learn more about becoming a Chemnitz patron, uh, you can find links to the Patreon in the video description and iCard. So how are we going to dye this? And I honestly am debating between doing dip dyed broken violet, which is something I love to do on new fiber types because it gives me a real good baseline because I know how well that works on non superwash wool in addition to superwash wools. But I think I want to go and play it a little bit safe. Um, there's not a lot of range in the colors that Olaf comes in right now. Um, and so I think I'm going to try to do something bright and vibrant, but also go for a semi-solid feel with this yarn. And then depending on how that goes, then in the future I might try some other techniques with this base. Um, so let me know in the comments what you would like to see on this Olaf base. But anyway, let's go dye our yarn. <laughs> Today we're going to go a little bit neon, well, a lot of it neon, and bright for like a reddish orange kind of color. In our pot I have eight cups of water and I'm going to add, that's five milliliters, ten milliliters of some Dharma fluorescent fuchsia. This is a one percent stock solution. And then I'm going to add fifteen milliliters. One, so that's three teaspoons of fluorescent lemon. Mixing that together, we have a nice reddish orange color, and it will be fluorescent since we mixed two fluorescent colors together. We added a total of 25 milliliters of dye, which will give us about a 1% depth of shade on our 25 grams of olive. Whoop, now we have no acid in here yet, um, but I'm going ahead and adding our yarn to the cold dye bath. And you can see a bit of this sort of corally orange color that we've got here. And I'm just sort of wiggling things in to get it nice and submerged. Now, even 
with this cool and having no acid in here yet, I'm still expecting to have some amount of tonal variation in this semi-solid yarn, um, but we've got some good space for it to move, and so, yeah, I'm optimistic, and I'm handling this really delicately. <laughs> I am now going to turn on the heat, but while we're still cool, I'm going to go ahead and add three tablespoons of white vinegar. This should be, if this were a superwash nylon blend, this would be enough vinegar for these colors to strike. Um, and you can see like when I pick it up that the color kind of comes down, it's not in there yet. I'm just lifting and lowering it to sort of stir and mix everything up. Um, so we might need to add more vinegar because, in my experience, um, some silk blends uh, take require more acid and a little more heat to absorb color. But what we're going to do is we're going to let this heat up slowly. Um, I mean, the heat is on like medium high, but I'm going to keep a close eye on it to make sure we see no bubbles, and then that's when we'll start the counter. The yarn has been heating up for about seven minutes, and you can see that there's a little bit of movement around the outside. I'm going to reduce the heat to low, and go ahead and cover this, just so that way we can keep that heat sort of in there. It doesn't look like a ton has absorbed. I'm not going to move it right now because I don't have a metal spoon handy. Um, we've probably absorbed some color. We've got this beautiful orange-red color here. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to let this stay sort of in this just below a boil space for 15 minutes, and then we'll come back and check. Alrighty, it's been 15 minutes. We are nice and steamy. Let's just look on the spoon. We've absorbed a lot of that color, and uh, I love these reusable nylon zip ties. I know I talk about them a lot, but I can use them in multiple experiments, and really lets me pick up the yarn and then we can see okay there's still a fair amount of color left but if you look at the yarn itself and again I don't want to move things around too much but if you look at the yarn itself you can really see that um, a lot more color is in there than when we initially started but I am going to go ahead and add more acid so one two three four I could just let this go a little bit longer and it's possible that we won't absorb all the color. I've used these colors before and there might be something left behind. But I'm going to be patient. I'm going to turn up the heat a tiny bit. Well actually, I'm going to turn it up a lot until we see a little bit of movement and then go and reduce it again. There we're seeing some bubbles around the edges. I just want to increase that heat a little bit but not have it be, have there be so much movement that we would start to see some felting. Okay, and I'm gonna reduce the heat before I am low, and now it's sort of in between low and medium, just to give it a little bit more heat. But I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for another 15 minutes. Okay, in that last bit of time, uh, you can see that there's still color in the water. It doesn't seem like the additional time has really affected the amount of color that we have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the pot completely, I'm going to leave the lid on and move this off the burner and I'm just going to let this cool completely to room temperature. Part so that way we can give a chance for those other colors to absorb to our yarn, but also part so that way I don't shock the fibers or move them too much while they're hot, so we don't felt that like lovely Angora halo. And one, two, about three more tablespoons of vinegar because that's definitely not gonna hurt. After a couple of hours, our pot has cooled down considerably and there is very, very little color left in there. So that is great. We are just about at room temperature and I could leave it in there for longer, but I am going to carefully remove our yarn so we can finish cooling to room temperature and just set it in the bin we'll use for washing so then we can wash it shortly.
Let's wash our beautiful Aloft yarn. I love how day glow our nylon zip tie has turned. Um, and this is a beautiful, looks like a true orange. We probably could have used fluorescent safety orange, but so far, nothing coming out. Um, I do want to add a tiny bit of some dish soap. I'm just using my favorite spray dish soap, adding a little bit. Sometimes that can see some bleeding on the addition of soap. I'm again trying to be real, real gentle here. I do not want to felt anything, but that's looking pretty good. I'm going to let this just sort of soak in the soapy water for a little bit and then slowly rinse out that soap, put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll come back for some conclusions. Hoo-wee! That's some orange yarn. Look at how our 100% nylon zip tie took up so much color. It's awesome. And of course we have to look at it under a black light. Um, it is a very orangey glow. I think the white balance is a little off, so it looks a little more red on camera. But oof, it is fluorescent and awesome. The color looks fairly solid. Um, there, it's possible that it is a tonal with some semi-solid uh, things in there, but it's beautiful. I think it's going to be really hard to see this, but the halo, that Angora halo, absolutely has more color than the silk core. If you look really, really close, you can see that the core is a bit lighter than everything else around it, which on camera it's looking like a white streak. It's not that extreme. It's fairly subtle, but um, that is sort of what we would expect, that the Angora would pick up color uh, faster than that silk core. Also the silk is tighter spun, so there's a surface area thing, but I think that it makes it really cool looking. As for the texture, um, it's definitely stuck together a bit, but I wouldn't call it felted because I can pull the strands apart with ease and I would be really easily be able to wind this into a ball or another kind of skein. I think that this is one of the natures of something like this with a with so much of a halo. Um, and I think that even if I were to go reskein it, which I think I might do just to see, um, I think that if I were to go to reskein it, even just from holding it, the reskeined yarn would feel sticky like this. Two immediate observations. One, I now have two skeins. <laughs> and two, this is so fluffy now. Um, you can see how just from being wet it's sort of stuck together and yes when I like move it the strands still stick together a bit but you can see just how much more volume there appears to be. One thing that I really cannot tell looking at this yarn is whether or not it is more of a solid or if we do have some tonal character in there. And I think that because there is dimension within the strand from the difference in color from the core versus the halo, that is making it hard to tell. But I do think that we got a, I mean, it's definitely a semi-solid, um, but I'm not sure if it's like a true quote solid or not. Overall, it did appear that this yarn absorbed color slowly. Um, and so that makes it a little easier to get more even coverage and means that it could be a little more challenging to do something with like dip dyeing. Now, I absolutely want to attempt that in the future and um, to see if we can break Whitland's Violet on it, for example. But yeah, I think that I handled it really delicately and our halo survived. We didn't end up with a matted felted mess. And so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a success. I just probably should have reskinned it by hand instead of trying to use the automated skein winder. I went a little too fast and clearly snapped the skein. <laughs> I could have done some kind of felted join, but I decided to just keep this as two skeins. So one of them is about 2.3 grams, 
and the other uh, 22.6 so that is our 25 just shy of 25 grams total I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you found this video helpful I know that I learned a lot from this and I knew that in yarns like this that the core is usually a different fiber than the halo but it's really fun to see that come through with the dyeing and I was also really excited that we did go ahead and absorb all of that color that we added um, it just took more acid than say a superwash wool yarn might have but I'm really really excited I'm also enjoying playing with orange, um, playing with these bright neon colors when I tend to go more for sort of jewel tones, deep saturated colors. It's been really, really fun. So please let me know in the comments what other kinds of colors I should play around with in these videos. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and if you want to get early access to videos like these, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. There's links in the video description, and it's a lot of fun. I definitely need to remember to add some Aloft to my next Knit Picks order. Man, I, I've been waiting so long to do this project, and ooh, is that like, mm, see it's hard to say with the color because if you condense the yarn more, the color looks deeper. So it, it would, you would need to knit it up, but I have a feeling that this yarn will have some really great dimension for whatever it turns into. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.